Hey, what's up guys? It's Seb from Workbench, and today we're gonna do animated map-like structures in Cinema 4D. This tutorial is brought to you by School of Motion. If you're an aspiring motion designer and wanna learn Cinema 4D, take their Cinema 4D base camp. Or you can take one of the other boot camps to build up your skills if you're already a little more advanced. School of Motion's courses are amazing, and I wish they were around when I started out. So definitely go check them out. The link is in the description below. A couple of weeks back, one of you guys asked us how we would create the opening titles to PauseFest 2018, created by Toros Kose. If you haven't seen them, I'll include a link down below. The animations are really simple, but beautifully done. And it's a good mix of After Effects and Cinema 4D. So let me show you how we think it's done. So I first started out by creating a plane and then adding a simple texture, turned everything off that's except luminance, and then in luminance I just added a noise. In my case I'm using Naki, but you can experiment with different kinds of noises. This effect is definitely going to take a lot of experimentation, so I encourage you to play with all the different noise types. Once I got a noise that I was happy with, rendered it out at 8K and make sure that you're using a format like OpenEXR so you have enough bit depth. Then I took that back into After Effects. So there's two parts to his effect. The first part is the lines, and then the second part is the terrains. They're both created very similarly, and they can be created from the same map. So in this case, you can see that I'm making a workbench one. And this is basically the same noise that you just saw me create, a different variation of it anyway. And I'm not really doing anything in here aside from pre-comping this. So I took my original map here on the right, and I cropped it down to 4,000 by 4,000 in a pre-comp just so that I could work a little faster. And also in my case, I'm rendering out at 4K, so I didn't need that extra resolution. So you can see here's my base map on the right hand side. I took it and I cut out a bunch of stuff. I just wanted this little piece in the middle. And then I took and I'm adding a few effects to it. So the key part of the terrain effect is cartoon. You can also use posterize but I find Cartoon has a little cleaner look. You can already see how it's stepping. I'm basically setting the shading steps to 27. I dropped the smoothing down to 35. And these two upper settings here essentially just gives you how rough this edge line is. So this is the base part. And then how I do the reveal is I have a levels above it that I'm just animating the histogram. You can see I'm pushing the colors in towards the black because I want it to draw on from black to white. And I'll scrub through here just a little bit. You kind of see how the, it builds up. Now the second part of this was the lines. The setup's almost identical except for there's one extra step. So I'm still using cartoon, which again, you could still use posterize. But here, as my last step, I'm using a find edges, which gives me the lines. You can see if I turn it off, you just get a straight black and white map. But if I turn it back on, you get these nice lines. And on this one as well, I animated the histogram. So it feels like the lines are kind of drawing in from the center and then filling into that map shape. So that's it for the maps. I took them both and rendered them out at 4K and then went back into cinema. Here I'm using Redshift because the displacements out of Redshift are much better and easier to control than Cinema 4D's base renderer. So the setup here is really pretty simple. I have two planes, one light, and a camera. The top plane is my displacement plane. And then this bottom plane is just larger plane to catch the fall off of the other plane. Just in case I move the camera past one edge or something, you don't see that edge. And then let me show you how the shader works. So the shader is pretty simple. I started with a base redshift material. Then I added the lines texture. And I'm pumping that into a bump and the color diffuse. And then I'm also using that for a slight bit of displacement. Then I'm adding a little ambient occlusion into the overall color. And all of that is getting pumped into the surface. Then on the displacement side, I have my noise map that we created in After Effects. And I'm pumping that into a displacement node. And then I'm mixing the line displacement and the displacement noise in this displacement blender. And then I'm putting all of that into the displacement output. Now, of course, you have to play with the settings a bit to get a nice displacement. But let me show you what this one looks like. So for instance, this is way too high. Knock down the scale a little bit. There we go. 
So in order to control the displacement, you have to add a redshift object tag, and then in that tag under geometry, turn on override, and then turn on enable tessellation and enable displacement. Now there's a couple things here that I changed. Number one is this minimum edge length. If minimum edge length is set to like, for example, two, you can crank up maximum smoothness, but it will never smooth all the way to 10 because this is setting the minimum length of a tessellation. So if I set this to one now, you can see I get a much cleaner render. So that's minimum edge length and maximum subdivision. This out of frustrum factor is essentially the amount of tessellations that are being done outside the camera view. So for my purposes, I just set that to 20. And then you have this displacement section in here. This is where you set your maximum displacement and your displacement scale. So it's kind of a cumulative number. So if your displacement is set to five, and for example, let's say 10, regardless of how much displacement scale you have, it's gonna cut off your displacement because it's getting to 10. So it won't actually scale to five. So let's say you bring this up to 20. You can see it brought all of those back. Again, these settings, you have to kind of just go back and forth and play with. So that's about it for the effect. It's really pretty simple. So I hope you guys take this and go through an experiment there's a lot that can be done with this effect, and I hope you guys come up with something cool. And again, thank you for whoever asked the question. This was a fun one. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench. And definitely go check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we'll catch you next week. <laughs>